Hey, welcome to the Team Babe podcast. I'm Jason, and I'm Babe. And I'm Robin, and I'm Babe. And after an- another long absence, we're back, coming back at you. Well, um, we couldn't miss the end of the year wrap up. No, we couldn't. And we couldn't get our shit together to do it on Christmas. <laughs> it's nope. not New Year's Eve. But I guess I sh- should have just shut the fuck up and not said anything because then we could have said, oh, it was New Year's Eve. Close enough. But I mean, wouldn't the expectation be that like Santa was in the background or something <laughs> like <laughs> eating milk and cookies or whatever? Oh, or boy. like. You know, a faint rendition of Auld Lang Syne mm. was, uh, you know, just barely audible, like from the neighbors oh. know, having a big party or something. We could play, we could play Morgan's version. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe we'll include that. Oh, well, that's a good idea. In this episode. Yeah, I'll have to get this edited up. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Well, it's a short one at least. I guess we can call it a night, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> you know, the key is to set like small achievable goals. And That's so, true. So you um, can make little improvements each day. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's the, um, I think it's, I believe it's the Japanese concept of like Kaizen or whatever, which is like, you know, continual daily improvement, improvement right? Yeah. yeah. So. Is that I what mean, you're doing? There's nowhere, <laughs> nowhere to go but up. You know what I mean? I mean, is that what you're doing for the new year? Kaizen? Yeah. Ooh, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> That's probably what I should be doing. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we, like, we're here, we're wrapping up 2023. Can you friggin' believe it? That it's, you know, almost uh, coming to a close? Not really. Yeah, I mean, maybe by the time you're watching or listening to this, it is at a close. And I'm it's sure. uh, 2024 or 2048 or... <laughs> or they, like, um, found this on some other planet far away. Yeah, other know? multiples of 12. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For some reason. Yeah, man. You yeah. Know, you never know. This, you never know. The people that find this in the future will think we're all very strange. So anyway, like I us. think our last episode was many, many months and many moons ago. So what, like, what have you been doing? Well, it seems like I've been doing all kinds of stuff. You know, like... um we we were kind of thinking like well what what are we going to talk about because we had some notes you know yeah that, that we wanted to get to but like not very many of them were relevant anymore since uh True. we've been asleep at the wheel here <laughs> or maybe the wheel <laughs> broke off or <sighs> fell off or we fell off well, or it was whatever like, you know the wheel of fortune like like in that uh classical you know music um oh. Fortuna, the wheel of fortune, uh, you know, spin the wheel and see what happens. Is to that your like fate. a classical like song or yeah. like piece of some mm-hmm. kind? Huh. Wheel of fortune. I mean, that's <laughs> so, <laughs> not what it's called. Pat but... Sajak just like ripped that. <laughs> that's the basic idea. Because that's how it works, right? The host is the one who invented the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. Well, like this show. Yeah. The host did invent the show. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this is, is unusual. This is the one, um, you know, the this, exception that proves the rule. Yeah. And we're also the producers and editors and directors and, you know, we get Cat to do wranglers. it all. Mm-hmm. We train the live monkeys. <laughs> we do it all, man. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it would so be... So we've been busy. It would be kind of impossible to catch up on everything. Yeah. So this is just like a highlight reel. It's kind of like you know? a 2023 highlight show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll try to make it, you know, of like a normal show length. I, I though, think so. Us. Let's not go crazy. Think? Let's not go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I mean, we're already there. <laughs> and maybe you're hearing some of the oh, cat yeah. craziness right now is cat these fight. two little... <laughs> Bundles of joy try to uh, murder each other in mm-hmm. the hallway. That's what brothers do. That's what brothers are for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pretty murdering much. each other. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, we can tie. We can just like shoot the shit. Well, let's shoot the cool breeze. What do you say? Shoot it. Okay. Cool breeze, bro. <laughs> so we had a literal cool breeze yeah. that we experienced inside in an indoor area. 
When was that? Yesterday? Uh uh-uh. uh. It was oh. when we went to the hockey game. Oh, that kind of. Oh, it was cool. Oh, yeah. It was icy. I guess because, like, there's ice <laughs> down there at the bottom of Did the Did you feel the, the Arctic winds when you were up there in the stands? Yeah. How does the Led Zeppelin line go? The winds of Thor? Winds of. I don't know. <laughs> You asked the wrong I'd have, to, <laughs> I'd have to look that up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, it was blowing cold. Yeah, yeah. so did all your dreams come true? I mean, we went to a real live hockey game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was really a dream of mine or anything, <laughs> but it was like um, I'm on a little uh, couple-week holiday uh, break from work. And uh, we're trying to think of like stuff to do, fun stuff to do. And um, I was like, well, or, oh yeah, there's like a hockey team. I wonder if they're playing. It's like a pro hockey team, but not like NHL, like maybe like a tier below that or whatever. Triple A whale shit, uh, <laughs> senior AAA whale shit well, like I, hockey. I think it's really funny that San Diego has hockey because it's not like I just thought, oh, you have to live somewhere cold, have hockey. <laughs> Which is kind of silly. <clears throat> yeah, they got that modern technology, yeah, they do. refrigeration and stuff that makes it possible. Yeah, to not have to like you know skate on an actual like pond, outdoor <laughs> pond, or yeah, it's like made to end or whatever. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, it was cool. It's so we went to a San Diego Gulls, not goals, but gulls like sea like gulls. seagulls. But but um, yeah, don't but everybody say knows seagull. You that's just say not. Gull. There's no bird called a seagull. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, it seems, it sounds familiar. Does that ring a bell to it you? It rings a bell. Mm. But yeah, so I had to, you know, like really um, uh, just kind of get into the, I had to, I had to get into it, man. And I was, I was hoping that the boys set the tone. Did they set the tone? They set the fucking tone coming, <laughs> you know, right, right off the rip. They, uh. They got a goal. Uh, yeah. You know, my goals got a goal. Um, and but then it was like a real long dry spell from there. And the other team, like the the ice hogs, hog, H O G, like these are team names. Like, <laughs> let's only have team names that where one of the words is like easily to be confused with a, another one. I know, goals and hogs. I, I really yeah. want to like research what the other <laughs> team names are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right in this league to find out but um yeah anyway uh so yeah yeah so the the ice hogs equalized and then like you know within the last two minutes of the third period uh the uh the goals came back uh with a late goal and uh <laughs> a went ahead goal, a goal goal <laughs> yeah <laughs> So stupid, and then they blew our eardrums out, oh, you know, God. for the third time Whew. of the night with the uh, fog. I have a the, real foghorn inside the stadium. I think it's pretty standard for hockey. For I was some not reason. prepared for that. You know, like basketball has that like really distinctive yeah. like I've heard that you know yeah. buzzer thing. I've heard that. This was like eight hundred of those. <laughs> I mean, this was like insane. Like I thought I was gonna like lose the rest of my hearing. <laughs> I mean, you gotta set the fucking tone. Babe. Well, okay, if that's the tone. Yeah. It's that's pretty low. It's loud. <laughs> it's low and it's loud. I love this the tone of this tone of yeah. this instrument, you know? It's yeah. like a loud tone. It was a loud tone. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, um yeah. So so you kinda you got the like Shorzy experience in real life like, without having to be on the ice. Yeah, yeah, I will say there, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, dipsy doodles and, you know, dangling and shit like that. Like, you know, uh-huh. a- and like it came close a few times to fighting fights like a few times. Yeah, you know, they're like holding penalties and slashing and shit like that. But like and like, yeah, there, but there was some... everybody kept their teeth, which I was really uh, happy about because I really didn't want to see somebody get their teeth knocked out. F- yeah, as far as we know, <laughs> everybody's uh, teeth on both teams are still intact. Um, I had a couple of observations, having never been to a hockey game before. Oh, yeah. You know, from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm curious. Yeah. So, I don't think you shared these with me. You were um, holding back, huh? Yeah, I was saving it up. <laughs> well, so first of all, 
I don't know if hockey really brings out like the best and the brightest of like audience members, you know, <laughs> like, like brings out their natural best. No, just the people themselves. Oh. Like it felt a little different than baseball or um, basketball or, you know, other other things. We've How been. so? How did it feel different? Well, it just felt like a little bit of a rougher crowd. Like, mm. generally speaking, you know, and there were kids there and there were families there and everybody was like generally having fun. But there yeah. were definitely some people yelling some stuff where I was like, really? Like, OK. Yeah. It wasn't very cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. I heard a few things where I was like, hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's not great. Yeah. Uh, it's a little racist. Uh, why is that that's happening not necessary. Here? But then, you know, you think about where we are. We're in this you know, town with a huge military presence. There's all kinds of like young, well, I know. young men. Oh, I get it. Well, here. but it's. But the sport, I think, attracts it, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, okay, and like, the, I think in a probably in a similar way to, like, football. I've never yeah. been to an NFL game, but, like, yeah, it, they're both, similar. like, really heavy contact, like, kind of martial types of sports. It's yeah. like, hey, we're going to chase each other around with fucking sticks and, you know, hit this, like, this uh, puck, you know. We're just going to hit each other and at the same time. And just <laughs> wail on each other, too. Um, and, like, it's part of the game. Right. I know. I get that. And I get that, like, things that are more violent are going to, like, it probably attract that special kind of crowd, you know? And also, hockey is, like, the least, maybe the least diverse sport I've, like, ever seen. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? There are, like, Finns and Canadians and um, Americans and um, uh, various other uh, forms European of, countries. of whiteness. <laughs> there was white, and then there was white. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. I, I mean, that so. was it was international, but it was an international white team, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and so I don't think this is a surprise to anybody that hockey is uh, white. Uh, I just hadn't really thought about it. Oh, you hadn't? No, well, I don't really pay attention to hockey. Yeah. So you know, having like seen it in real life, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems very old fashioned, and there's no women's hockey of any kind, as far as I can tell. So no, there is. There is. Sure. Surely, where? surely there is. See, you don't even know. I couldn't tell you where, but it's somewhere. Mm. They probably play in like um, out there in the rock pile. The rock pile? Yeah, what's that? What's Poway. That? <laughs> you, you know how it gets all rocky, and the, and the, like you think that's where a women's team out there. That's where like that that uh, team trains. I know. So probably like if there is a women's team, that's probably where they play. Well, I'll have to check it out. I check think, it out. I think that there could be like an element of. Um, Derby on ice, you know? Mm. In a good way or a bad way? Yeah, in a good way. Like, you know, like derby is like a mostly women's sport and it's diverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could just put it on ice and it would kind of be hockey. <laughs> <laughs> but not really, right? I mean, there's just no... add some sticks. I mean, you some know. Some sticks and a puck and trying to shoot it into a net. <laughs> But you know the skate. Do do Skating is the main part. Is there like a goal or something? I mean, kind of, but not exactly. Oh. Okay. There's no net. But you throw something through something. No, it's like a handoff thing. I mean, it's like you hand. Okay. Like you're you're trying to keep something away from somebody. It's like a a Football. puck. Football. Sort of. And it's sort of violent. Gridiron. You know, it's kind of rough. Yeah. 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 Huh. So. Yeah, well, just an should, idea. Maybe that's like one of their big re like recruiting pools or something as uh, yeah, Derby. Sure. And my other uh, <laughs> my other note for them is that they need to make their gull look less like a scrawny bald eagle, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it'd be just right. Add uh, some people who are not white. Get a different mascot. Um, keep all your teeth <laughs> and get a better audience. <laughs> was it like uh, Looney Tunes or whatever? It's like some bird or some animal would like take their, like unzip their like shirt or whatever. It was like their, and then it, it would, they would just look like a, like a cooked turkey or something <laughs> underneath yeah. or whatever. Kind of. I think you're thinking of Tweety Bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's no, that's what the cat would envision. It would like be like, oh, I know there's a roasted little turkey under there. No, but sometimes I would take take like an article of clothing off and it would be like oh. that. Anyway, like the <laughs> gull, you know, is like the, an eagle, which I didn't realize that gull is just an eagle, a bald eagle that took its like jumpsuit off. Oh, Like in I one of those cartoons. See. I gotcha. And see, that's how they can like do twice as much. 
or half as much, but get credit for twice of that. <laughs> mm. You know, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, man. What I'm saying is like every goal you've ever seen is also a bald eagle. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I believe versa. you because one of them had a piece of pizza at the beach the other day and it just like completely dove into the water like a bald eagle to get that piece of pizza. <laughs> so I, I believe you. Yeah, man, they were duking it out. Those goals. <laughs> yeah. So we've been on this kind of kick of like, um, you know, our entertainment seems to be all the same thing, which is a lot of toxic masculinity. <laughs> oh. I don't know what's wrong with us. It's like accidental, I think, but I was like, what is this trend? Anyway, we've been, we rewatched Entourage randomly, <laughs> sort of as yeah. a joke. At first, like, I was like, oh, my God, I can't, I know, it's I can't the believe worst. we're doing this. Like, And I hung in there for, you know, kind of thinking that for probably, like, one and a half to two seasons or something like that. Uh -huh. And then somewhere around there, it sort of had this turn where it's like, oh, you know what? This show is actually, it's got, it's got a lot of heart, you know, or whatever. It has its moments. It's got its moments. But then it also has, like, you know, incredibly, like, whatever terrible racist, like homophobic <laughs> shit terrible. going on left terrible. and right and just like the craziest um sexism portrayals and, of like you know uh, i mean just like the worst behavior you can imagine glorifying in, the worst behavior ever <laughs> in the movie over, industry and stuff and over, holy shit did and you over. see that tackle i missed it yeah anyway um anyway but it was like of course you know like not for everybody for sure but for whatever reason I just love Ari Gold. That was the whole reason I watched the show in the first place. And he's such an asshole. But I just, uh, there's a little part of me, it's sort of like, you know, love the villain. But he's sort of a good guy, too. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, you know, like he's got underneath it all. Yeah, yeah, underneath his terrible when exterior. All, when it all, like, uh, when you strip everything else away. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, he's he's like good he's kind of a good guy at heart sort of Whatever. thing you know? you know but he does a lot of like he talks a lot of shit yeah calls a lot of people yeah. crazy names oh, i had i the had craziest i had names. like a realization Terrible. at a few points where i was like wow like why how do these people how i mean i know it's fake or whatever it's a portrayal but like you gotta figure like it's somewhat based on how some people are to a certain degree at least yeah you know <laughs> for and sure like, i was like how do how would people like talk and interact like that but and then like just keep doing that <laughs> and keep talking to each other and yeah, keep having like, a relationship and be friends <laughs> and be like business <laughs> yeah. associates or whatever yeah like because i know if i ever talk to anybody careers. that way that people would just be like completely <laughs> offended forever it's like the most <laughs> ramped up, like roasting, constant roasting. Yeah. Like, yeah. That I've ever seen. I don't think anybody even really does that, that, like that, or portrays that that way in shows anymore. Like, when I see that, it's very out of place. Yeah, totally. Well, it's not something you want to promote. I no. mean, that's the other thing. Is there's, it's like, there's so much of that. There's so much of that in the show. But yeah. I'm kind of glad we rewatched it because, one, it was just kind of a fun, fluffy, nothing. You know, you don't have to use your brain to watch this show. Yeah. And that's kind of nice. But also, uh, I feel like now I've gotten my refresher on what it means to be a Hollywood agent and or manager, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And how nothing is really real until you sign on the dotted line, which that was a great reminder. Yeah. It's all just an idea otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um... Now, is that something you'd be interested in? <laughs> no. No, Bob, it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so now I feel like, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to do some kind of negotiation, I'm ready. I got mm. the, I got the Ari Gold, you know, guidance, coaching. And, yeah. and now I'm ready. So if anybody gives me any shit, I'm going to let them have it. <laughs> Man, watch out. Uh-huh, watch out. Oh, the other thing, real quick, uh, the other thing I realized that sort of like that last thing about like, oh, wow, there's, they still stay in business with each other. It's like, or they're friends still, you know, yeah. in these shows. It's like, oh, wait. Like, I think the last time I'd watched this show... I don't know if it was the first time we watched it or if we'd watched it again in the meantime. And this was like a third time, but whatever. Like, I don't think either of the the previous time I watched it, I was like, 
wow, man, these guys are like just total assholes to each other. Like, what's up with this relationship? But then I realized watching it this time that the only way people would do that and still do business and together and be friends together is if they loved it. Yeah, they love the ball busting. They actually loved getting their balls busted and busting the other guy's balls and like yeah, because you just making it hard. You wouldn't answer the phone otherwise, right? Yeah, right. You'd just be like, no. Yeah, but they're like they're doing this. No bridge is too far. Every you know know, all day long, every day, and call each other eight hundred times. It's like yeah, I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't pick up the phone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that would be the cruelest punishment for people like that. <laughs> anyway, I guess we're still uh, desperate for entertainment. Uh, I guess. As a culture. As I guess. A, as a family. As a person. I mean, I guess so. As a being. Yeah, but we're going to move couple. on. We're going to move on now. We are. Yeah, we're going to move on to some different types of... Uh, we're going to try, try out some different types of toxic uh, masculinity. <laughs> We're thinking we'll probably watch oh, like maybe just... a few seasons of The Ultimate Fighter. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> and then, and no, then no. Uh, well, we we watched. Well, we already an watched episode. that stupid Marky Mark movie. Oh man, <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, it's okay. not even. But we did watch a good, um, a good Marky Mark movie, oh. which is I Heart Huckabees. Yeah, I, I mean, I That's still right. highly recommend that. Yeah. Now, have we transitioned? Are we doing the wrap up, or are we still shooting the shit here? I don't know. I've lost track. Oh, I think we. I think we are still shooting the shit. Are you done? <laughs> have you no, reached ma'am. the end? I just want to make sure we don't forget anything. Oh no, no. We got so much. Yeah. It's anyway, all you. Continue. Well, you have the next topic. <laughs> I'm gonna hand the mic off to you, Jason. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, that doesn't feel very natural. I know. That was the joke. <laughs> okay. All right. But now it does. I'll give you the setup. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Set me up. Okay. So, uh, you know how we like to go to the beach? Yeah. And um, I had to stay out of the water for a while, which was really sad. Mm-hmm. And then the, we had like what they call local summer. And I was always like, what the hell are people talking about local summer? Well, it's the time after Labor Day when all the tourists leave and then the beaches are all like not crowded and Uh, the weather is still warm. And then you can get out and get wet and do your thing. And there's like half the people there. Local summer. Yeah. See, I don't think I ever even heard about this. This is fall. I did notice. Yeah, I know. I, I understand that we went through it recently. Yeah. Yeah, and like that—that that was great. It was kind of glorious, actually, this yeah. year. I really enjoyed it. Like yeah. we got out and went boogie boarding, and it was like the water was really clear, and it was cold. Mm. I mean, it's definitely gotten colder. Yeah, but not so cold that you can't swim. No, except no. for this weekend, because <laughs> I wouldn't put one toe in the water yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the we've had, uh, you know, as the breezes have turned cooler. Uh, in yeah. the greater San Diego uh, <laughs> <Area>. ecosphere. <laughs> uh, yeah. So has uh, the um, the water, of course, yeah. has gotten cooler, uh, but it's still doable. But I don't think it's as much of a like a wa- cold water situation as like giant fucking surf from like these uh, big swells coming out Scary. of the west. Um, stay, yeah, like stay out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, surfers I mean, unless, are loving it. Unless you you're know? a pro surfer, then go ahead. <laughs> yeah, or just a good surfer. But, like, yeah. I mean. uh, we went down to the beach yesterday to check it out because it was you know, supposed to be, I don't know, it's usually, like, two or three feet yeah. here. Yeah, pretty like tall. Pretty close together, like, you know, wave periods and stuff like that. But uh, this is, like, uh, it, originally it was, like, 11 when i looked at it uh, when i got an alert on it last week on the long t- long range forecast it was like 11 12 feet or something like that i was like holy shit that's crazy i gotta go check that out and i told you about it and then you know they adjusted that and it was down to like six to eight or it something still looks like crazy yeah it, was it still, still looks crazy and i can't i know like mavericks and all this was having like 30 and 40 foot waves i mean i can't just seeing like a 10 foot wave i'm like god that's huge yeah like i don't even know if i want to see a 30 foot wave in person i mean maybe i already just have be so scared you'd just like pee your pants or something <laughs> probably <laughs> probably you'd like run and hide i mean i probably actually have already seen it because we lived on the north coast and i guess that's a regular thing 
20 to 30 foot waves is not that unusual. So perhaps we've already seen them. I bet that's still not very. Like every winter, that's supposed to happen there. Oh, okay. Like yeah, when a storm time. comes in. But yeah. maybe we just didn't go to the beach, you know? I don't think we would when know. the weather was bad or when it was, you know, like, so Rainy. anyway. But yeah. But yeah, it was, uh, it's, it was big and, you know, there's more happening today and I meant to go look at it today, but didn't get to, but maybe tomorrow and just see, cause it's just fun to watch people who actually know what they're doing, like navigate whatever paddling out and catching waves and stuff and that to me so are you ha so you wear your spring suit even in the winter i do yeah i mean You're it's crazy a little, like that well it's like low 60s or something like that and i have a lot of fat so it's not that i not mean that i have bad. to wear my three millimeter in the summer yeah, but you're way skinnier than me <laughs> not that skinny well i mean Charlie yeah, compared with me. Charlie gets cold in the summer. Charlie, Char Charlie needs no like a five mil. <laughs> yeah, he has no body fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super cold weather suit. Uh, yeah, he does. With a hood and that sounds good. I stuff. want that too. You want that? Mm -hmm. Hey man, yeah, you can you can have that. You know? I can. Oh you can. man, you just gotta pay for it. Ugh. I'm gonna find one at the thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that's tricky yeah it is but yeah i still go out in my if i can in my spring suit because otherwise I, I don't know it's kind of restrictive and it gets i get too hot especially if i'm working hard that's so weird to get hot in your wetsuit but i believe you yeah but i just got a lot of fat man was it because you're wearing your bear suit it is mm. i have the um well, first I have like the hydrophobic skin, oh, right? right? Then I have the layer of bear hair mm, over it that true. provides like a kind of a cushioning, like um, creates a microclimate effect oh. between oh. my skin and like, you know, the top of that hair or whatever. Yeah. That hair is coated with bear grease, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just giving you like all the layers, you know, from, yeah. <laughs> from skin out. Yeah. And then... It's the wetsuit. Ah. The rash guard. Okay. You know, yeah. And then stuff. the sun shining on you, And too. then the sun. Yeah. And then the sun. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have, you know, like a sort of a planet of the apes biosphere that happens on my legs when I don't shave them. <laughs> you get apes down there? Ape hair. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It happens fast. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. keep me warm, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's but... just ugly. <laughs> Yeah, the, cool, the the breezes have grown colder, man. So true. The leaves have not fallen. I'm ready for, I, I think, yeah. I'll be ready when spring rolls around again. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, it just it lasts so long here. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I like uh, when my toes don't get cold at night and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know, yeah. But, yeah. All right. So, so anyway, let's let's talk about some highlights. Let's wrap it up, man. Of this past let's, year, man. Let's, let's, wrap let's up provide, this year. like, a, our you know, um, legions of loyal listeners and fans <laughs> out there. I'm sure they've been wondering what the hell we've been doing. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, well, they're probably just, you know, on their third or fourth re-listen. Oh, no doubt. You know, going back to episode one, man. Yeah. Well, I do recommend that episode one is pretty good. Oh yeah. I'll, to, I'll have to go back and do that. <laughs> yeah, you do it. Hear it again for the first time. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I've listened to it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, what what do we got? Man? Okay. Well, let's start where we left off. Because we had another episode, maybe two, this that came out this year. We did. It was one or two. I think it was two. Okay. Because like we'd recorded one, but it was like at the end of last year, oh, I yeah. think, or something. Had I already fucked up my knee? I think so. Oh wow, we recorded. I think so. After that, I think so. I'm gonna have to go back and listen. Yeah. But, yeah, well, uh, yeah, so that's been a year since you messed up your knee, so mm -hmm. yay to be pretty much done with that, even though you're still working on it. Um, but yeah, like, if we picked up where we left off, it was the summertime, and we took a trip to L.A., Oh um, yeah, a little weekend trip, mm. you know, as, as I took the fam. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and... That was fun, we went to... Uh, the the reason for the um the trip was to see the John Williams Hollywood Bowl Hollywood Bowl concert yeah because Morgan's a big fan and John Williams is getting a little old and yeah. we thought well we better do it now yeah because we don't know how many more John Williams concerts there'll be 
Yeah, and the tickets were quite reasonable. Yeah. And, you know, you can bring food in. It was fun. The bowl under certain circumstances and with certain yeah, rules. Yeah, you can stuff. picnic. You can picnic. I like that about the Hollywood yeah. Bowl. That was pretty cool. It was pretty neat. Um, but anyway, so that was like the impetus for the trip. But we stayed a night. Yeah. Right? Um, was the concert the first night? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it was. Then we were there for a little bit the next day. Yeah. And then... Oh, but yeah, it was we we did our whole like whatever our like Burbank to NoHo to, to WeHo. WeHo. We were living that LA life. Yeah, you know, man. For a saw the saw the hobos. <laughs> L- yeah. uh, Laurel Canyon. We oh hit yeah, that. we we did we we made quite the tour for the little bit of time we were there. Yeah. And um, so the day of the concert, we were like, okay, we got to like figure out this parking situation and we got to like, you know, be ready for the shuttle and we got to be there in time. And so we ended up just killing some time down in the design district, you yeah. know, as, as, you as do. one does, as you do when you're in, you know, in the area. That and was the, the like the location of like where the bus was going to be. Yeah, that's up, where right? we were waiting for the shuttle. Yeah. So we're like, oh, we'll walk around and, you know, see what's up. Yeah. And uh, we did that, and we went down to, you know, West Hollywood, and, you know, we went to the grocery store. It was really exciting. <laughs> it's always a good place to take a leak. You yeah, know? it's a learned. great place to go to the bathroom. There's usually parking if you're a customer. Yeah, yeah. You can see the dog um, park on the way. Um, yeah. You know, and then you can right. see all the gay bars, and you can, like, see all the sites, you know, as yeah. you go. Uh, so that was fun, but then on the way back, um, you were like, well... Uh, you know, does this place, this design center, does it have a bathroom? And I was like, well, it's huge. It must have a bathroom. I don't know. So we go in there and it's like the palace of design. You know, it's like, oh, they should just have a sign on the door that says rich people only. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it's just like a, a I mean, convention center or something. No. Like, yeah. No, no. It's a design center where they have all these super high end interior design like showrooms. And so people go in there because they're going to buy like, a, you know, a $10,000 couch or something, or they're going to have somebody, you know, put 24 karat gold tiles in their bathroom. Or something. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so we went in there. I was not impressed, no, man. You were I was not just looking for it. a place to take a leak. Again. Again. Because <laughs> we already did that at the grocery store. Sometimes when I drink lots of beverages. I know. You know, like I pee a lot. It's fine. To. It's fine. Or so, whatever. And like, I think I was trying to hydrate. Oh, yeah. It was a, it was a hot day. So, I mean, yeah. it was fine. And none of us knew. And so we went in there. And of course, there's no public bathroom. This is like, you know, if you don't have an appointment, like, please leave. And so um, the kids just like kind of started to freak out. They're like, we shouldn't be in here. Like, what are we doing in here? Like, we're so out of place. Like, but you know the doors are open. Like anybody can go in there. Yeah, just you know? walk in. <laughs> and like, so, and so you're like, well, I'm gonna go find a bathroom. Kick me out if I'm not supposed to be here. Like, tell me I'm not supposed to, because like, right? Which, I don't know. Maybe I've maybe I'm here to buy you know some high end, um, like baby furniture or something <laughs> like that. You know, and from so, the bay. Yeah, and so you were like looking all over. Of course, there's no obvious bathroom. So you like go up the escalator, and then you're like, I don't know, chatting up the maintenance person to open the bathroom. But anyway, uh, we all just like waited for you in the lobby because the kids were just like pet- so mortified that like I don't know, they were just you know having a moment. <laughs> so anyway, oh, we're just hanging out, and so we're looking through you know it's like all glass showrooms, and so we're like looking in there, and we're like. Huh, that, that lady looks a lot like Rihanna, like that's in that showroom. And then Morgan's like, "That is Rihanna," and I was like, "No, it's not. Like, that's not. Do you think you always think you see celebrities? Like, come on." Yeah. And so then we're like, you know, she turns around. And I was like, you know, I think that is Rihanna. <laughs> So then they're really freaking out. Then they're just like, oh, my God. Like, this is so embarrassing. Like, let's get out of here. Like, we shouldn't be in here. Rihanna's in here buying something. <laughs> this place that she's got, like, her bodyguard and, like, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, you guys, like, let's just go outside. I mean, while all this is going on, I'm still going to the bathroom. Yeah, you're upstairs going to the bathroom. Like, you don't know yeah, what's the, going on. The, the maintenance person, you know, yeah. let me in or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and so... So I'm like, well, let's just go wait outside on the steps, you know, and just get out of the way so that if Rihanna needs to come through here, we're not, you know, 
bothering her or whatever and so they're like okay yeah let's go outside so we go outside we're waiting on the steps and you come out and you're like all right you guys ready to go and then as soon as you came out like then rihanna comes out and we're like she just like walked right by us because of course that's what you do she's just a regular person yeah. shopping for her house mm-hmm. Except that the paparazzi are also there. And they're like taking pictures of her coming out. So we photobombed her on accident because we were standing on the steps. And they, she was like so close to us. The guy couldn't like crop us out of the shot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we'll, we'll be sharing that uh, oh, photo. Yes. Um, but I have to say, like, you know, she lived up to the hype. She's very beautiful in real life. You know, it's not like it's all Photoshop or something. Yeah, no, she looked great. No, I really, I just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I was like, uh, don't impress me much, bud, type of moment. I know. Me. I don't know why. You're like, so weird. I was so weirded out by everybody freaking out about the fucking, uh, um, bathroom. Like, like, just being in this place. Like, whoa, we shouldn't be in here. I was like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I'm just trying to take a leak. Like, this is just like a place you go into, and then there are places like, you know, I just didn't understand, like, what your uh, fucking problem was. <laughs> well, they just, you know, they shot Project Runway there. And, you know, like, it's just one of those places that's, like, celebrities go there. Yeah, it's, that's great. Or whatever. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just You it, just didn't experience the magic of um, that celebrity no. encounter like we did. I didn't. Anyway, so whatever. I mean, I was just, like... I, oh, like yeah, that's that's great. And then like some somebody who was walking by on the street like started yelling at Rihanna and all this stuff. And like I don't know, it was a, a weird moment. It was a weird moment. Like we were caught off guard. And so, um, and but it was but it was the fun. Pa- yeah, the paparazzi photos. We are. I mean, I'm I don't think I am. No, but tra- the back of Charlie was yeah. A, um, it's and it's blurry. You know, well, so you can like... read his shirt. It's not that blurry. They tried. They tried to get rid of us, and they couldn't. <laughs> Surely they could have. It would have looked weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, because really, we were like a foot away. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, that was fun. That was like a fun Hollywood moment, you know? Yeah. At least for us. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, it was just strange. Yeah. And so then as we were waiting for the shuttle, um, you know, she took off and did her thing. Well, her bodyguard came back later without her and picked up whatever this thing was that she bought. Yeah. And it was like huge. And this poor guy is like <laughs> trying to load in the back of the suburban. Morgan was just like, Oh my gosh, we got to see what she bought. It was like a weird little circular staircase. I was like, that is so strange. It's like a staircase for a baby or something. <laughs> so it was funny. It was funny to see what she bought in the end. But that was just because we were loitering. <laughs> like a bunch of hobos. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're just so out of place. We so don't belong here. That's what I don't get. It's like they've made this the place where they're going to pick us up to take us to the Hollywood Bowl. I know, which is kind of like, hilarious. Well, it's where the two worlds come together. Yeah. Like, you know? if you don't want me here, then fucking don't tell me to go get well, picked nobody, up Well, nobody here. told you they didn't want you there. This is this is the kids feeling like country bumpkins. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, we weren't ready. Like, we didn't know, you know, even though we're in L.A. and we know celebrities live here. You didn't have your, like, fashion attire on. Right. Like, we weren't dressed. We're just dressed. like, you know, we've been driving. Yeah. We weren't dressed for Rihanna. We weren't, like, oh, ready. You know? What would you have, if you had dressed for Rihanna, what would you have put on? Oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> I would definitely would have gotten dressed up. Well, let's hear it. What would, what would the outfit have been? A Rihanna worthy outfit? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a tough one, but I probably would have worn like, you know, like a black, um, you know, sort of a tuxedo, you know, like, but cut for a woman. Oh, like you know? she's worn that. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of a red carpet look. Like on Vogue or something like that, yeah. like on the cover, maybe. So something like that. I don't remember heels. that. Because you're such a fan. <laughs> such a fan, <laughs> Rihanna. And, you know, I would have had my hair done and my face on, and I would have worn some, you know, some bling or something. Oh, I mean, yeah. she's all about accessories. 
so essentially you would have been worthy of not being blurred out uh, correct or cut out of the you know yeah. the paparazzo because she was ready she prepared herself for the paparazzi of course. like she had her whole face on and, i mean and she what, was ready what kind of fucking idiots would <laughs> prepare when they're going to the <laughs> pacific design center but see, when you don't know you're going to go to the Pacific <laughs> Science Center, you're not running. Yeah. So she had a plan. That's the trick. I think, you know, it's like probably celebrities like that. They're just like, I mean, you, you hear or see it like portrayed in movies or whatever, interviews and stuff. It's like you always have to be like, ready. camera ready. Like somebody could be taking your picture That's and you don't want to like, have your finger like up your butt or like... <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, don't, because like, you'll never hear the end of it. Like, be picking your nose or something <laughs> yeah. like that, you know? Like, pulling your, um, you know, pulling on your nuts or something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she wasn't going to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. almost sure. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, that was, that was... So that was a highlight of this trip, for that sure. That was a highlight. Yeah. There were a few other ones, though. Uh, Juan Jilliams. Juan Williams really delivered. There was a lot of lightsabers in the crowd. There was a lot of fake conducting. There was a lot of um, singing along. And, like, uh, you know, it was like the Star Wars people were there for sure. Yeah. It was almost like a Star Wars convention in a way. Yeah. It was like a band geek uh, yeah. convention, yeah. I would say. I, I think. Yeah. That's I the think vibe that's accurate. That I got. There's like, definitely a lot of, like, um, music majors there, you know. I think so. And then, you know, the they conducted with the mm -hmm. with the lightsabers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Did they have, like, baton, like a lightsaber? Yeah, yeah so I remember John Williams and the other dude mill. Um, they had, like, their own little... Dude mill? Is dude mill. Dude mill. The other conductor, the one who's the L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maestro. I, I just didn't... I thought his name was Dude mill. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool. That's a cool name, well, almost. Dude mill. Dude mill. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I mean, it sounds like a real name, but Dude Mel sounds like <laughs> maybe, not a real name. And maybe very you cool. can adopt that. Yeah, Dude Mel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they had a little battle. Oh, yeah, the lightsaber battle. Yeah, and that. Uh, but John Williams, he definitely kind of shuffled. He shuffled in and he shuffled out. He definitely looked like, a, like an old. But I mean, he is old, but you know, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. A very unassuming uh, celebrity, I would say. Yeah, and youthful, aside from mm -hmm. the, the old man shuffle. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, uh, I mean, he but, was up there, yeah, doing his thing for a while. Yeah. But yeah, that was fun. I mean, the Hollywood Bowl is really like a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. I would definitely go back and see something else. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then the next day we went to the Getty and we looked at a lot of art Getty. and we looked at the old of the gardens and that was really cool. Yeah. I'm glad we went. It had been, um, for me, 17 years since I had been there. So it was nice to go in and actually see most of it. Yeah. And can't really see it all in one day, but to see most of it anyway. Check back in. Wow. 17 years. That's well, I, right. I went yeah. there with Sarah when I was pregnant with Charlie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I had the best sandwich of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it couldn't be recreated this time. No. It must have changed. Um, uh, it was too expensive. <laughs> yeah, Way but it wasn't, expensive. it didn't look good either, right? Um, no, it was the just like a very shishi um, oh. restaurant yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. that's how. And they, then we had this gluten free they issue. They make their money. Yeah. So it wasn't the same, you know, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, just amazing, though. Like, yeah, beautiful place. Seeing the place was f like fantastic. That was by far the best part for me. But then the, there was some also some like cool art that we got to check mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the names of the people or whatever. But well, we mostly went there for the photography exhibit. Yeah. There's a fashion photographer that you know I meant to, and That's he right. did like a special exhibition for the Getty. Yeah, and um, it was worth it. Yeah, I was I was glad I went. Yeah. Oh, and I got a LA Public Library library oh, yeah. while yeah. I was there. So did you and Charlie, yeah. right? Wow, well, we're um, officially LA Public Library members now. Yeah. And, and we went to we're that good for like three years or something. Where was the one that we went to? It was pretty cute. It was like an old historic library and that was oh, on um, was that in Burbank? I think so. Or Toluca Lake or something like I think that. It was Burbank. But it was very old. It was like from the twenties maybe. Mm hmm It was really cute. Yeah. Like very historic. It was probably like a prison or like an insane asylum or something like that, but it seemed all like. No, I think they actually built it, the original library of Los Angeles. I think that that was it. Wow. 
I think I was like reading the sign, and that was like the original one. Yeah, well, that that is cool. Yeah, I kind of forgot that. I kind of forgot about that part of it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, that was neat. That was also fun to yeah. kind of poke around in there, and um, I would definitely go back. Yeah, they have a lot of cool events. You know, if you're there. Yeah. So um, anyway, that was our summer vacation. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had a good time. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> then and, what happened? And then what? Well, and then we came back and we resumed our beaching. Yeah. And Charlie's been surfing. Yeah. And um, my big news is I cured my weenus. Your weenus? Your weak <laughs> neck syndrome? I finally W-N-S? cured it. WNS? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. I've had those. A like bum shoulder neck situation for like almost two years, and um, I did all the physical therapy and it worked. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> go me. Now I'm having like now you're having it. I gave some it shoulder, to you. Some shoulder issues, <laughs> yeah, it migrated. It did. So I we think that maybe maybe I have a touch of the mm. weenus. Oh babe. And you don't want to touch the weenus. <laughs> don't want too that. much. Mm-mm. Um, Mm-mm. yeah, that weak neck syndrome will get you. You got to strengthen that neck, yeah. boy. Yeah. And or I, girl, or I, being, or... <laughs> I, uh, when I finally like went out and boogie boarded again, I was like, okay, back mm. at full power. No more whiplash. Right. And no more arm pain when I'm swimming. Oh, right. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is just in time for these giant waves. So good thing. Perfect. <laughs> You'll yeah. be out there shredding. Yeah. Um, we did a couple other fun things over the summer. We actually went to a Smashing Pumpkins concert. And yeah. um, that was really kind of funny because <laughs> uh, Stone Temple Pilots opened for them. And w- these are two bands that, like, we both love and, like, you know, we were super big fans of when we were teenagers. And, like, you know, I could say we were still fans, but we don't listen to them as much. Uh, especially since, you know, Scott Weiland. Uh, is no longer with us for stunt of pilots. You know, yeah. I mean, he was kind of the band in my opinion, sort of, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, I was fairly done with stunt of pilots. Like even that number four yeah. album or whatever. Pretty stinky. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause they are like almost metal. It's almost like a real meathead kind of yeah. like music. But then like we talked about in another episode, you know, Robert DeLeo has all these jazzy kind of like things he throws in there which makes it interesting yeah but then <laughs> it was really funny to take charlie to this concert because he <laughs> listened really to ever to stone double pilots and a little bit to smashing pumpkins and he was just like i'm not really into this like motorcycle rock <laughs> which is like how he described stone double pilots like this motorcycle kind of like country rock mm. <laughs> it was like I would have never described it like that at the time, but that's kind of accurate. Um, but the guy that they got to replace, the lead singer, did an amazing impression of Scott Weiland, but it was like Scott Weiland the musical, you know? Mm, yeah. I couldn't quite get into it. There's a little you know? sparkle. There's a little sparkle motion. Yeah. There. Yeah, a little jazz hands. Um, yeah. But it was a good performance. I mean, like... They're still really good. Yeah. They're good musicians for sure. But I, I mean, I, I just couldn't believe that they are playing as like Stone Temple Pilots together. That's yeah. so, that's so wild. That's weird. I mean, I can't like blame them for wanting to. Of course. Because like, hey, because like, it's, they probably love playing those songs. They and do. It's like, you know, they can make money yeah. that way and not have to like, you know, go work some job they don't want to do. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, but, exactly. but like, yeah, it's just, it's just weird. I, I don't know. I didn't mind the, uh, the new lead singer at all, which really surprised me. I thought I was going to hate it because, you know, yeah. like for me, I mean, the lion's share of what made that band, that band was Scott Weiland's like words and singing. Yeah. Right. His you vibe. Know. <clears throat> yeah. And like all the kind of. Uh, especially as he got deeper and deeper into drugs, like the, you know, weird influences uh, with like yeah. the stylistic choices and the music and like the production and stuff even mm-hmm. like was, uh, you know, really enhanced by him. But like just listening to somebody else do a Scott Wyland impression and like, 
sing those songs. Like, yeah, that's pretty good, man. He couldn't, he, like, he wasn't a 100% there on everything, but he did a good job. He did a good job. I mean, and yeah. The, and then, I mean, Smashing Pumpkins. They were good. Yeah. They I were really great. enjoyed it. It was, um, it was really fun to see him again and, like, Billy a Corgan different like way. A, you know, like the witch, uh, just some, some tall, like, <laughs> Male, male witch. A warlock. Yeah, like just weird. Yeah. Was it? Wait, no. It was. That was. This was last summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, no, it wasn't. Was it summer. Halloween? No, it was October. Okay. So yeah. So it was close. So it to was Halloween. close to Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. he he had a backup singer because Darcy is not in the band. He had a female backup singer that was actually dressed as a witch. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that was yeah, great. Yeah, and he just looks like one naturally. He because, does. Like he always wears like that weird. Like he kind of wears a dress. Yeah. It's sort of like a nightgown. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. Or like Uncle Fester or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I, I don't totally. know. <laughs> but I, the highlight of the show for me, well, I mean, like Jimmy Chamberlain is always kind of the highlight because like he just, you know, is so epic. But I forgot how much I like James Eha. Mm-hmm. Like he's so good and he's so funny. Yeah. I mean, that guy cracks me up. Yeah. So, like his first little comments. I was just like, oh, James, I missed <laughs> you. Like, well, and do you remember like <laughs> when you saw them before, like Free Tibet and like whatever, like Cow Palace? Did uh-huh. he do that same like kind of? Uh, not at Free Tibet. He would do like crowd work. He does crowd like, work. Just yeah. to whatever fill time well he makes funny Billy jokes Corgan is tuning his guitar or, you know, yeah changing yeah. his fr- something with his frock or something <laughs> adjusting his frock um yeah and he does a great job and it's always the same it's always the same kind of bits but mm-hmm. it's always funny yeah. because it's always unexpected for some weird reason and um yeah anyway charlie enjoyed that pretty well he was pretty impressed with smashing pumpkins and yeah. they sounded great yeah, it really like it was good. Paid paid off that that yeah. that show and it was cheap. It was and cheap like, and it was close by. I mean, all so the things. Good. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah, okay, we mm-hmm. could do this again. Um, and but, like, you know, pretty dynamite. Like people watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was so many people like our age or pre- like older, fifteen years older, and then their kids. Yeah. It was just like everybody bring your kid to the concert, <laughs> just us like included. <laughs> We're like, you know, it's just funny. I was telling Charlie, I was like, you know how Nirvana was like so offensive, like when they came out and people were kind of freaking out about it. You know what I mean? Like conservative people are just like, you know, whatever. You're asking me? If yeah. I remember that? Yeah. And, and it was kind of like, you know, a little bit like hardcore, you know? And yeah. now when Dangerous. you go to Trader Joe's, it's just playing in the background. So I was like... You know, whatever you think is crazy and offensive and whatever today, give it 20 years and it'll just be playing at Trader Joe's <laughs> in the background, like elevator music. It's like so bizarre. To yeah. Me. It still throws Trader, me off. Trader Joe's will be in a bunker 200 <laughs> meters below ground. Yeah, exactly. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. We'll yeah. have to tunnel there. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, I guess that we could say that was the end of summer, at least here. That was. Yeah. And then we, we had Thanksgiving and we did our like, you know, going to the track and betting oh, on man. the ponies. Betting on the ponies. You had uh, some uh, additional health opportunities. I did. I, I You this, mentioned earlier the yeah. time you couldn't swim. Yeah. So that was um, related to some You and things. I have had about 12 months of interesting health opportunities. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that 2024 will be less about health opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I think it, now it's time to really like, you know, make make the most of like, you know, uh, doing whatever we can with those opportunities that uh-huh. we were given. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like no more of uh-huh. opportunities. Yeah. Like until we get like those straightened out. Yeah. Yeah. Dialed uh-huh. in. Like, oh yeah, we totally lived up to this opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, the short version is I had a minor surgery. Um, I had a little cyst removed um, from my reproductive area. And it was um, apparently something that no one on earth had ever seen before or since. Yeah. So a new thing for the science world to observe and um, yeah. test to and, no avail. <laughs> yeah, and now you can say you've been to Harvard. 
Yes. And so those people at Scripps um, did their best, couldn't figure it out. And they're like, well, we're going to ask the good people at Harvard to take a look. So they sent this cyst to Harvard. And I mean, I always wanted to go to Harvard, but not exactly like that, you yeah. know? Well, and you also didn't come back like a high power corporate attorney driving an that's, Infinity Q45. That's probably the part of this whole thing that was the most disappointing, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Because when you come back from Harvard, man. I'm going to kick some ass, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nobody... damn, your hair is going to be in the tightest uh, tightest ponytail. Oh, you know it, man. Oh, it's going to yeah. make, like your scalp is going to look like it hurts. Yeah, that's right. And Severe. My heels are going to be so high. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to be grinding them. Ooh, out. Watch out, man. <laughs> Razor sharp, as Morgan would say. <sighs> yeah. Razor sharp. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway... Everything, I'm fine. Um, no one still knows what it is, but um, yeah. I'm okay. And, uh, you know, life goes on, and I'm just going to keep doing some testing. Um, yeah. But I think I'm done <laughs> Test. with uh, hoping that anybody will ever figure out what it was. But it's not in there anymore, so hey, um, I'm all good. Yeah. So I'm thankful for that. I actually have a lot of things to be thankful for. You know, these health opportunities, they actually, they, you know, they kind of do you some good. Like, for instance, I stopped drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> because of this health opportunity? Yes. That's correct. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm drinking less alcohol. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm exercising more. Like, I'm like... Fitter, happier, yeah. more productive. Yeah. I was like, you know, <laughs> why not? Why not just make the most? Of, hey, man, uh, we're trying, just trying know? to live up to these health opportunities yep. that we've been given, man. So yep. You don't want to let... This opportunity only comes once in a lifetime. Yeah, it's like you know, mom's, mom's spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> Jinx, yummy soda. <laughs> Shit. But not Diet Coke. Because <laughs> um, it's poison. All right. Did so, we hit it? Did we hit it all? Yeah, let's, let's give them the song of the week, man. Okay. I mean, you know, if like maybe there were other things. Oh, there were more things. It was, you know, I mean, for all the health opportunities and like we did some cool shit this year we, we got did. to see some cool people got in the water a bunch like i'm happy with 2023 like it, there was some hard times um but it could have been worse you know the hard looking times back at it right now i'm like damn that was a pretty fucking good year man <laughs> hey yeah man that's what i like to hear you know yeah well, let's make the the next one even better yo yo let's do this it opportunity only comes <laughs> once in a lifetime yeah it's like mom spaghetti <laughs> oh, i just heard that song i was like man, yeah that's... man his sweater stained already blah blah, blah. Right oh song. we're gonna get a copyright strike Oof. cease and desist Oof. oh speaking of that yeah okay let's get to the song of the week oh okay yeah, yeah. all right so okay, it's um what is that song called <laughs> Well, we have two. Lose yourself in the music or whatever. No, it's not. Uh, that. Opportunity. Okay, once I got a lifetime. I gotta like draw. Letting the days go no. by. No. I, I gotta draw the line on the to toxic masculinity. Okay, like at some point. All right, and I'm drawing it on the music, the song of the week. And oh, okay. I don't even know why we're calling this the song of the week because clearly this isn't happening each week. <laughs> but I guess that's the song of this week. The week that we're recording. Does yeah. that make sense? It, it's the song of our, for us. Our, our week. For our week. It's okay. the, for you, it's the song of whatever week it is whatever when you listen week. to this. All right? That's the beauty of the song of the week. Okay. Yeah. I like it's, it. It's like universal, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on. So what is it? So it's Father Figure oh. by George Michael. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you can't sing it. Oh. Copyright strike. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But we'll we'll link it. Um, the estate of George, yeah, W. Michaels. I so. mean, everybody our age has heard this song, probably yeah. a lot, and um, it was a big hit. It was a radio hit, and it got a lot of play in the late eighties and nineties. Um, but I probably hadn't really listened to it in a long, long time, and it was it just played, you know, on my Apple Music, and I was like. Holy cow, this song is crazy. Were you listening to it on headphones? No, or what? in the car. Oh, okay. I was driving to school. You had it loud, though. Yeah, I had it loud. I was driving to school, and I was like, whoa. You ask me sometimes, like, why does it have to be so loud? Yeah. 
That's why. <laughs> yeah, well, see, when I'm by myself and I'm not trying to have a conversation, I like crank it up. Yeah. Okay, but I'm trying to have a conversation. I can't do that because I, I can't hear. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. It, it can be frustrating, especially with how they mix like things. Yeah. It's like, oh, you can't yeah. fucking hear what they're saying. And then it's like you're getting your head blown off. Yeah. You know? You're like that guy in this <laughs> in the Sony commercial. Sony commercial. Yeah. So like when I played it for you on the good speakers, you know, in the house, you were like, "Whoa." Yeah. No. So then I was like, "Okay, well, it is good." I always give it the Jason test. It's crazy, <laughs> like production and like I mean, I'm hearing the groove right now, and it's so good. Um, and what what I mean, like 100 percent written and produced by yep. George Michael, right? 100%. Which is crazy. And I'm sure it's been like remastered since or whatever, but do yourself a favor and listen to it on some decent speakers or like a headphones pair or of headphones or something mm-hmm. and really just like key in because it's such a crazy good, um, it's like a composition. First of all, it has yeah. like this, you know, Arc. melodic um, beginning and end like kind of figure thing. And then it goes into this groove and it's just like, just and it has a lot of elements. So tasteful. It and has so much tension. It, you know, it, it reminded me production-wise of like, and I'm sure this is no accident, but like of uh, that Sting record, uh, oh, Ten yeah. Summoner's Tales. Yep, same maybe era. Maybe even like the one before it, but I think yeah. whoever produced those records, which I don't remember who, uh, was heavily influenced by the production on that because like that cross stick on the, like. Yeah, that, yeah. Mm, <laughs> Like yeah, it's so just, just so like satisfying. Yep. It's and so well really done. intricate and like then the words are pretty amazing. I mean it's really all about him being a repressed gay man. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. this different identity. And not just like the like the actual words as they're written, but like the phrasing of how yeah. he sings them and stuff yeah. like that is really odd. Like it's um yeah, it made me realize that like that that guy was I, I knew from having like tried to sing a few yeah. of his songs, like for real, not, I mean, not for real, but like, and do a decent job at it. Like with karaoke. Same. Like, couldn't uh, do it. <laughs> I'm no, not a singer. Dude, I'm but fucked. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is not easy. It's a hot shit singer, mm-hmm. man, but also a musician and producer and like, yeah. Is this really uh, writer? So unusual. George Michael. Yeah. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Check him out, man. Yeah, George Michael. Uh, <laughs> you know that guy? But we actually had to pick two songs of the week <clears throat> because I rediscovered the Cindy Crawford Shape of Your Body workout. And in there, she had the Seal song, uh, Crazy, you know. And again, I had not listened to that in a super long time. And I was like, you know, watched the video a couple times as I was working out. And I was like, dang that's a pretty good song. Like, you know, it's like one of those things you've heard it so many times. You just don't really recognize it for what it is. Yeah. But then hearing it again, I was like, wow. Like again, he's a totally amazing singer. Like the production's really cool. And the phrasing is interesting. And yeah. the, you know, like it's, there's a reason why it was a hit. Both of these songs. Like, yeah, I think both of them are like significantly ahead of their, they, yeah. they sound appropriate for their time. They did. And yeah, they do, but they they were I think very ahead of their time also. Totally. And I don't know if either one necessarily like holds up like oh this sounds like modern today. Probably like, this not. This sounds like I don't think so. Probably because not. Because it's like some of those synthesizer sounds and the um, it, actually both of those songs I think like suffer a little bit. A little bit, and the lyrics are like you know wouldn't fly totally today too, like completely, but like. Yeah. But if you just take it from musically or whatever, I mean, it's uh, pretty oh impressive. yeah, specific particularly the seal song. Yeah, right? yeah. But also, like he says, like cray cray in there, he or something does like, say like cray. 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 <laughs> or and like what, like what? I think seal this might be the inventor cray? of cray cray. Yeah, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like yeah, but that's only because we had the lyrics. So like when you listen to this stuff on the radio at the time, you're yeah. never gonna know that. I mean, with both of those artists, too, it seems like there are, like, these words that are sort of just, like, thrown away yeah. a little bit. That you yeah. maybe, like, you have you heard it, but you didn't really know exactly what he was saying or whatever with that word. That was just sort of, like, thrown away because of the phrasing or whatever. Yeah. Interesting, man. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 
Those are both worth worth awesome. You know, it's weird. Like you, both times when we've talked about this, like before you played the seal uh-huh. song for me and stuff. Like yeah. when you said seal, all I can hear is like "Kiss from a Rose" right, right. for like forty five <laughs> seconds to a minute, and like I'm gonna look back at when I'm editing this because you'll see. Maybe you did see my gears turning, <laughs> trying to remember what the fucking song Crazy by a Seal well, even that's... is. And it literally took me like, I don't, I don't know, it felt like a minute. Yeah. Well, Kiss from Rose like, oh, is his biggest hit. Yeah. And Crazy is probably the second one. Right? Yeah. But Crazy was first. I think so. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to go back and listen to Kiss from Rose. Maybe it's better than you think. <laughs> I think it sucks, man. But well, it's know, so... Man. It's so, like, uh, for me, like, connected directly with Seal that when totally. you even mentioned totally. it, even ha- us having talked about it and listened to the song within the last five days or something like that, like, I, I was like, what, is, <laughs> what song is crazy? And then I was like, yeah. And I finally got it, like, a minute later. You gotta so. wonder what, if Seal loves that song or if he's like, God, I wish people would stop associating that with me. <laughs> There, uh, I think it was Seal, um, like when, one of the bands I was in. Um, yeah, I don't know if you remember this, but we, I think we played. It was we played mo- like, I think all covers basically. We pr- played like weird shit, like uh, Brick House. We played, oh, I uh, do remember. Voodoo Child. Oh yeah, I remember. We played. Um, <laughs> what was the name uh, of that band? That Tool song, uh, Sober. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. We played Flashlight. Well, you had an amazing lead singer, this lady. Yeah. It was super good. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it Mr. Vane? Yeah, it was Mr. Vane. I just didn't <laughs> want to say the name. It's terrible. But I will give you a vampire band. I mean, you know. Mm. <laughs> I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Other than the, you know, the visual, the, <laughs> the mental image I get of the, like, drawing that uh, John Lewis made of it. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, believe me, I got it. Um, But she was great. Like, I was kind of bummed out when you guys quit that band because I was like, this is the only band you've been in that was like, people want to watch this shit. Because she was good. I don't even remember why. I think the band, like, just everybody stopped playing. Yeah. Broke up. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're not going to do this anymore. I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, why was I saying that? Did you do Kiss from a Rose? Um, oh no, we played, um, or we were working on actually after that lady, she was just not in the band anymore. Oh, okay. And I think maybe like Bruce was singing mostly, okay, and, yeah. and Ryan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, right. and we were working on See, a that cover lady was of, it together. and played a cover <laughs> of, yeah, she definitely was. Yeah. Um, oh, there's another guitar player too. I can't, I haven't thought about that guy in a long time. This is interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, it was, uh, oh, Seal. Um, I think he was, it was a cover of Manic Depression by that he did? Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. He did a cover of Manic Depression? I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to, uh, let's look, dig look those for up. that. Yeah. Well, let's dig that up. But yeah, I hadn't thought about that song in a long, long time. But maybe there's more in the Seal catalog that's uh, worth a listen. I'm uh, sure there is. I mean, he's a great singer. Yeah. 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 So that's the song. Two songs of the week. Two songs. Since this week. we fell off for so long. Yeah. <laughs> we had to. Kinda, I'm not even going to say know. when our next episode no. is going to be. I'm not um, either, because you can't predict this crazy life. You know what I mean? That's right. You never know where it's going to take you. Because you got to get a little crazy, you know, like yeah. if you want to survive. Cray. <laughs> Get to get a little cray cray. <laughs> yeah. Well, babe. Yes. It's been a wonderful time podcasting with you again. Thank you, my darling. And uh, thanks for being my my partner through 2023 and beyond. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll be here and for the, the next ages one. Ages of ages. <laughs> the eons of eons. Yes. You know it. Yeah, till we're just too, um, you know, like brain stems. Holding <laughs> forceps. Well, I'll look forward to that. Yeah. That's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. And I mean, if I'm going to hold forceps with anything, it's going to be you. Okay. Sounds good to me. 
Then um, you are a thing. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm the original thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I love you, babe. Love you, too.